Good evening. It's five o'clock on Tuesday, February 6th for the select board February. meeting. February 6th. February 20th. 20th. Oh, right. Okay, it's February 20th. That's fine. Um, yes, thank you. Remember, I looked at the restaurant and I looked down there too. Okay. February 20th, um, and we are going to call to order and welcome guests. We have uh, Brian Voigt from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. We have Michael LaPointe from NRCS. They're going to be um, talking with us through the second item on the agenda. Um, we have Randall's iPhone. Welcome, Randall. I'm not sure why you're here, but maybe you're just here to see it. Okay, thank you. And Randall's friend. <laughs> and Zara, Weiss. welcome. Weiss. Okay, Randall's wife. <laughs> oh, that's a friend too. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to approve the minutes of the 2 6 2024 select board meeting. Action likely. Any discussion about the minutes? Okay, is there a motion? I'll make that one. Okay, Randy's. Yeah. Okay, and um, Randy and Vic seconded. Yep. So, all those in favor of approving the minutes from 2 6, say aye. No. Aye. aye. Okay, the ayes have it. So, now we're going to approve tonight's agenda for 2 20. Um, action likely. Uh, is there a motion? So, Liz, yeah. um, I believe we want to have a discussion about the ARPA funds, correct? Yeah, I was going to ask if um, there were any things to add. It's on the yeah. agenda. It's on the agenda. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Clean out all the chairs. It's on at five forty-five. The treasurer's report and viewing the ARPA projects. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you. Is there anything else uh, that people want to add to the agenda? No. Randy, anything for you? Nope. Okay. Hi, Adrian. We have Adrian here also for the um, agenda item number two. Okay. So, is there a motion to approve the agenda? You motion. You uh, Randy motioned, and you are second. Okay. Uh, Vic seconded. All those in favor of approving the agenda for two twenty, say aye. 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 No. Great. Well, we are ahead of schedule at five oh three, but I think we have everybody here. Is that right, Brian? Was anyone else going to come for your um, from your team? Uh, no. And thank you, Michael, for for joining us. Um, and we have Adrian Megida here as well, um, representing um, Middlesex as a volunteer for this emergency watershed program. So um, we thought it would be helpful to invite Brian and Michael here, especially as there's been some sort of updated news about the funding piece of this. Excuse me, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, I don't know uh, Brian's last name. It's Voigt, V-O-I-G-T. V-O-I-G-T. Yeah, from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, so um, I don't remember who sent the mail. Was it uh, the email, Michael? Was it you who who told us about this updated um, possibility of how we might be able to um, pay the contractors? And maybe you'd want to sort of talk us through that a little bit for the other board members. It was not. And first, I'll start with our our policy waiver request for 100% cost share was approved this morning. Oh, so that's... we expect to get the additional funds for the projects that have, have been funded by next middle of next week. So oh, okay. it won't impact. Yeah. Unless you guys sign the agreement right now, what we do is when the agreement's executed is have to do an amendment to add the additional funds. So it's okay. just going to be a, another step. So, so the, the, the towns with an agreement already will go through an, agree an amendment process to add those additional funds. Um, okay. I will say one stipulation though is that uh, the, the funding pool of the national office is for the whole country plus some of the outlying uh, areas in the pacific and the atlantic ocean so when we come out to bid let's say in the middle of june or july and the bids are higher the town can request additional funds typically those requests are approved but it all comes down to the funds being available at the time that we make the request so at the end of next week, we'll have the funds to cover 100% of what our DSR estimates were for this event for all the projects in the state of Vermont that we had eligible. Um, okay. 
as we go down the line, that's always the possibility that they run out of funds and then we either put the projects on a wait list until more funds become available by Congress or the town needs to decide if they want to move ahead with the funding that's available. I just want to say that it's always going to be 100%. There's always that caveat that they run out of funds in the pot at the national office. Um, okay. So anyways, for the initial part of it, as far as the estimates you have and what's going into the agreement, we'll, we'll have 100% of those funds next week sometime. Okay. For the reimbursement, <laughs> yep. I just need I just need clarification for the minutes. The one hundred percent of the funds pays for what exactly was what DSR? I need I need him to spell it out. Okay, the hundred percent. What is that covering, Michael? That's for the construction cost. So, so so the cost share rate. We have two funding pools. The the financial assistance, what we call FA funds, covers construction costs. Initially, the funding ratio was seventy five percent, twenty five percent, and ours is would pay 25 or 75% and the town was responsible for 25%. Historically, towns transfer that 25% liability to the private landowners that are benefiting from it. Um, how they do that, that's up to the towns and we don't get involved in that piece. We don't have any authority beyond the town with our agreement. Um, the waiver request we did was to increase the, T, uh, the FA cost share to 100%. So um, we'll receive 100% and the DSR stands for damage survey report. So every site that we went to for the event, which was over 236 sites, I think we're up to now, um, we did a damage survey report on, and it comes back as either being eligible or not eligible. Part of the eligibility is doing an estimate of the repair cost, and that turns into our funding request. So the funds we received is based on our estimated cost of the repair. Um, so by next week, we'll have 100% of the cost share for those eligible DSRs in Middlesex. Okay. The engineering was already 100% covered that we never had to worry about, right? Yes and no. It is 100%, but we have a limited pool of funds. The amount we get is based on our estimated cost. It's a percentage. So we receive 15% of whatever the estimated cost of construction is. So we offered up two thirds of what we received because it also covers my salary and all the other staff uh, our archaeologist that does the cultural resource reviews on all these projects, the people that do the NEPA reviews on our staff. So we offered up two thirds of what we got of the, that TA. We don't have a history of requiring sponsors contract engineering services. So in my 30 years of doing this, I've only requested additional TA twice, which is the technical assistance fund. We had one approved and one denied. So that's, that's my, my, my track record for TA. So I don't know how our request for additional funds will be taken, but once you have a price proposal slash bid from an engineering firm for services, the town can request additional funds and we'll put that up to the national office and try to get some more funds. But if you read an agreement when you get it, it always states in there that there's no guarantee we'll actually cover 100% of those TA expenses. It's just, it's a limited pool and it's all we have. Um, so we won't know until that piece comes in um, the town, if the bids come in and we can't get more TA and you feel that's too high a price for the town to bear, you guys can end the process right now. It doesn't have to go any further. You're under no obligation going to the end. Uh, the only time you'll have to finish a project is once construction starts, you have to finish it. So the there's still the 25% um, responsibility of the homeowner, no? Well, that's 100 no, pounds. So, so it wasn't like they're doing this to sort of front us and they're and we're still going to get no, so they no, we're going to cover 100% of the cost. Up. Okay. We should and be then, able to cover 100% of the cost. It's just there's always the possibility they run out of funds as we go down the event. We've got over 12 million dollars worth of work, and California keeps getting hit with floods and landslides. So I know they're going to be dipping into that pool. It's just that's. You know, they, I think they had a hundred million at the end of the year last year. So I know there's funds there, but we've run into where we had to, we had to go on a wait list because there were no more funds at the national office. I just don't okay. want you to think that it's always a hundred percent. It's just at some point, either it goes on a wait list or you accept what we can offer for cost share. So the final cost share might end up less. I don't see that happening right now, but it's a possibility. Randy. I just have a question for Michael. Uh, Michael, it sounds like, um, all the way up until the day that trucks start rolling or equipment is is deployed to the site that you know 
we could obviously check in and make sure that the, the bid cost that was uh, approved and whatnot, that funding hasn't run out and we could essentially call somebody off all the way up until the day that they deployed. Is that accurate? Correct. As soon as the contractor expends a penny on a project, we got to go to the end. But we, we would know whether or not funding was available before that. Theoretically. Right. So, so if you guys get bids, the first thing you'll want to do if it exceeds the DSR estimate is submit a request for additional funding. And then we submit a request to our national office and they either approve it or deny it. Um, I don't think I've ever had one denied other than they didn't have the funds for it and it was could have gone on a wait list. Thank you. You're welcome. So... And and your thought, I mean, what you're saying in this letter is that um, <clears throat> as soon as we get an invoice, we submit it with this SF-270, which gives us, buys us like two weeks of time for us to get the money from you, and then we can pay the contractor, which, Correct. which helps so, so the uh, not take out a loan to pay this. They're right. So the that. SF-270 is the reimbursement form. It doesn't matter whether you it's done where the, the town pays 100% or we do it this way as an accrual. With the accrual, it's it's if we went with like and tried to do an advance payment and an agreement, it comes with time limits. So if anything happens to delay the construction and you run up against the wall of that uh, extension limit, you run into a lot of problems with the agreement. Doing it this way, my experience in the last 10 years since we instituted the new system that they've got in place for agreements, this payment usually happen within one to two weeks of receiving a request for reimbursement from the town. I typically work with the town to make sure the paperwork is in order and the invoice is there. And with just doing the invoice at this point, you don't have to worry about that, the, you know, to show that the, the cancel check or anything. So if you get the invoice, you submit that SF-270, we process it, and usually in under two weeks, the grant people will, will pay for it. It's a high priority for them to get the payments done. Um, and that would give you the town two weeks, roughly, to pay the contractor within that 30-day limit. And the, our deposit happens electronically, so it's not like you have to wait for a check coming in the mail. Okay. And there's no time restraints in that, so it's not like an actual advance. It's just we're paying ahead of time. At some point, the town's going to have to show proof that the contractor was paid in full. That's a yeah. requirement of the agreement. But by doing the accrual piece, you get the funds basically up front as soon as you get the invoice. You aren't mm -hmm. required to pay the contractor first. So, Michael, can you kind of walk through so that we understand? So, you know, we have limited staff um, and they have lots to do. Like, what kind of commitment is this for, like, walk us through a family that has signed up for this and um, they want to get a contractor. Who is scheduling the contractor? Who is um, who is making sure the whole project happens? That's the responsibility of the sponsor. The, the okay. landowner itself doesn't have, we can't work directly with the landowner. They have no no buy-in as far as we're concerned. It's strictly through the sponsor for us. Um, Regional Planning Commission, I think part of what they were doing, I could be wrong, but I think they're working on the request for proposal for engineering services. I don't know yeah. if they extend to the, the construction piece of it, but everything is through the town. So ultimately the town is responsible for it. So part of what you could do with the request for engineering services is that the engineering firm would provide construction oversight on behalf of the town and they'll certify it's their design they'll certify the project at the end of it yeah and if i could just jump in thanks thanks for that clarification michael uh hi folks this is brian voigt with the central vermont regional planning commission so yes the the request for proposals is is generally speaking it's ready to go and we would be identifying an engineering firm that would uh, re revisit those final designs, make any changes as necessary, and then uh, release the request for bids, as Michael just mentioned. The request for bids then would be, or the bids themselves would be submitted by one or more construction firms. The engineering contractor that we hire will help us make sense of that and get us to a decision point on a, a contractor. 
Um, and then when the contractor is ready to invoice, the invoices will go to the engineer for a, a review. They'll forward them to, to us and we'll forward them to the town with the SF270 form so that, um, so that you're ready to submit that in a timely fashion, get the money in. And then once the money hits your bank account, um, I don't see CBRPC playing a role in in helping with with the payment to the contractor or the the engineer, other than us approving an invoice for payment and supplying any necessary documentation, as Michael has pointed out. Okay, so you will play a decent part in this in terms of. So really, it sounds like the treasurer or the bookkeeper gets the invoice and with the form the SF. 270 and we send we send that in we get our money we pay our contractor and then if there's some issue with like somebody's home right who are they communicating with you brian like the central Vermont regional planning commission or what do you mean by an issue liz i'm not i'm not sure i understand that Anything that could come up where the, the homeowner needs to communicate with someone about this this project that's being worked on. That's the engineer that they're working yeah, with? I mean, they, the... they can reach out to CVRPC as their, their first point of contact, but it's likely we would involve the, the engineer or if it's an issue about construction, the engineer and the, the construction firm. And if we had to uh, go out and do a site visit and, and talk through things, but hopefully that kind of, you know, the concerns will be alleviated at the time that we get that landowner commitment letter. Um, they're going to understand what exactly is going to go on on their property and how long it's anticipated to take. Um, so, you know, best laid plans and, and so forth. Hopefully we don't run into those but uh, types of issues. But if we do, then um, sure, CVRPC can be the first point of contact, but it's likely we'll pull in the engineer and, and construction contractor, depending on the issue that's highlighted. Okay, so are there any questions, further questions? Sarah, do you have one? We got tons. Okay, Sarah has a lot of questions. She's okay. taking notes. So, um, hi, I'm Sarah, I'm the town clerk. Yeah, uh, we're, I assume that our, our records will be audited. We need to have records available for auditing, right? It's records need to be kept for three years. Right. I'm not sure of, I know of any sponsor that's ever been audited for, but it's it's a requirement of the agreement to keep records for three years. Always a chance. Trust yeah. I've been right. So yeah. that's the first question. So all the notes that you have with the engineer and the construction firm, we will need to have those in our records, right? Correct. Ultimately, that the, the sponsor is responsible for the work in the sense that's that it's everything's through the sponsor. Right. So although the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is high, doing submitting the RFPs and hiring the engineer and having them review the construction, ultimately we're the ones responsible at the end for what happens, correct? So we just need to yeah. know that we have. Okay, so that's my first question. My second question is we have, having gone through FEMA buyouts, I know how precise everything is. Do we, we have absolutely no responsibility to pay for or put out RFPs on, on the various sites, because you know, whether that's the state of Vermont or business registry, that will not fall into us at all? I don't, that depends on what the, the agreement is between Sierra PC and you. So that that's a role that we're happy to play, Sarah. We've got um, we have funding independent of the this project work through the Municipal Technical Assistance Program to provide you with that support. So we're happy to to put the the RFP out on the bid registry, advertise it on the CVRPC website. The only thing I wouldn't be able to do is to modify your own website where I. I would also suggest that you advertise the opportunity. That's certainly up to you, but I can take care of the CVRPC side in the in the Vermont bid registry, no problem. And then that that'll also carry through for the construction contractor that the uh, either the engineer or CVRPC will help advertise the construction opportunity once again through CVRPC website and the bid registry uh, along with direct solicitation. Any time will those uh, proposals or bids need to be approved by the select board? Well, you know, the way I envision this playing out is that we'll receive all of those proposals for the engineering services. 
and uh, we'll review them. And it would be great if there was someone from the select board that wanted to be part of that review panel to help make the ultimate decision on which engineering firm we go with for the project. And then in a similar fashion, the engineering firm will receive all of the bids from the construction firms that respond. They'll prepare a memo that uh, offers a recommendation for a construction firm. And typically we'll have a follow-up meeting with other project partners to make sure everyone's on the same page before a contract is extended to a, um, to a construction firm. Okay. And so what happens if we run into uh, weather delays or cost overruns? Is that any, at any point is the town on the hook for any of this money that you can envision? Once they've started the shoveling. Once yes. they, but I mean, like, let's say a project is a hundred thousand dollars. Now the project goes into a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I mean, that's my concern. Is that as you're talking about going down the road and these projects, you know, start getting bundled and they get more expensive. I think we all know that construction costs always go over whatever their budget is. So how do how, will the town ever have to put out its own money at any time to cover these costs? Always a possibility. One of the key things that was brought up was the landowner involvement. And mm -hmm. one of the things that can happen is the landowner can start directing the contractor, but technically from our point of view, the contractor works for the town. And if they start directing the contractor to do work that's not approved, that we call that an unauthorized uh, expenditure, and we would not cover that. Right, and the town wouldn't cover that either, I would assume. If, if, if there's any kind of a change order that's needed, and RCS should be involved in, immediately, and the town should request additional funds if it's needed for it, and that work should not happen until those funds have been obligated. Basically, we can't pay for work that's done before the funds for that portion of the work is done. Right. My concern is this, that we will at some point, and I can just see this happening, because how many projects do we have in Middlesex? Do you guys know? Ten. Ten, Ten projects. The town of Middlesex does not want to be in the business of chasing down private homeowners for money that, you know, no one, no one, not you guys aren't going to chase them down. We would have to chase them down. And that's that I'm just trying to spare the town future pain, just be clear about whether or not we're going to have to expend any town money or go after anybody. I don't want to do that. I, yes, Randy. An answer I at, can't give 100% to. At, at this point, Sarah, the 100% match is going to cover the proposal that's put forth by the contractor that's approved. I think what we need to be clear is that anything outside of that is a separate arrangement between the building owner or the landowner and that contractor. And that just needs to be specified as far as the approved contract. Right. I'm, I'm not worried if they say, you know, I want you to go work on my garage and you fix my driveway. That's not my concern. My concern is that the actual project that's bid for, they say, oh crap, this is bigger than we thought. We're going to need X because anybody who's in construction. Well, he did say that, I think Michael, if I understood you, was that they're covering a hundred percent of the estimate today, not right. six months from now when the guy actually comes and says, actually, it's going to cost 120,000, right. not 100 that you, but that's when we go in and we ask for more. Is that right, Michael? Where we say Correct. the bid can't be higher. And, and providing the funds are at the national, okay. providing the okay. funds are at the national office, um, those, those requests should be approved. Yeah. And the, the, the hard part is when we're under construction and things have to come to a stop until we get more funds. Okay. And, yeah. you know, we're always playing that game is the, are the funds available or not? So mm -hmm. saying a hundred percent, the town would never be have to, to come up with funds or in the case of private landowners, you would transfer to landowners. I can't say a hundred percent. No, because we could be into the construction. You request the funds. There's no funds in the pool and either we shut the project down or you choose to go through with the project without the additional funds needed for that piece of it. But okay. barring that the funds are there, yeah, there should be a hundred percent cost share for these projects. Um, one minute, Peter. Adrian has her hand up first. The, right now, the landowners think that they're going to pay 25%. Yeah. And in an email that I sent earlier this week, I suggested to them that we were going to ask for that money before they when they signed the contract before the work began so that the town would have that money and it it might behoove us to do that anyway even though we think 100 percent is going to get covered mm -hmm. they're under the understanding that they're going to pay 25 percent right now and I then mean, we would I, pay it back if we would pay it back if it came in 
at the bid and we didn't, you know, we got the 100% funds. But that's a possibility to- To alleviate some of that. The stress, concern. yeah, yep. or overruns. Yeah. Peter? Can, I'm sorry, Peter, I don't want to, I just want to weigh in on one other one other thing real, real quickly about the cost. And part of the reason to bring the engineer in at, at this time prior to them requesting bids from construction contractors is to make a final assessment of the cost. I mean, yes, I understand that it could still change once uh, once construction begins, but the the point of bringing the engineer in is to really tighten up those costs and um, you know make uh, make refinements on the individual sites themselves, so that we know ahead of time if we're going to be in a position where we need to request additional funds from the the NRCS. So again, it's not a 100%, there's not gonna be cost overruns, but the costs themselves, the, the esti project estimate themselves should be as good as they're gonna get because the construction's gonna happen imminently after those bids uh, have been prepared. It's not like the bids will be prepared and construction's gonna happen in 2025, where I, I would agree that the cost overrun concern would be a lot more pressing. Yes, Peter Hood, thank you, Brian. I, I, I have a quick, Quick technical question. So let's suppose the worst happens and there's a project underway and there's a cost overrun and we apply for more funds and there are no funds available and we get put on some kind of a waiting list. Do we have the option of funding that work and then getting reimbursed later or do we need to stop the work until it's until the additional funds are available? Everything I've ever been told is the work would have to stop. We can't pay for expenses that occur before we have the funds. It's called an un un uh, unauthorized expenditure. So if we go ahead and pay that money, we can't get reimbursed is what you're saying. Correct. We need to, I believe we need so. To, if push comes to shove, we need to stop the work and wait for the funds to become available. Right. So like I said, okay. if, 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 if there's a change order needed, we should know immediately. And if it requires additional funds, we should go through that process of asking for the funds first before that piece of the work happens. Okay. And I assume, I assume Brian and Michael, that whoever gets hired as a contractor understands that there are the the way they're supposed to manage their programs. I mean, this you know their projects. Well, I mean, like they're I would, not just go ahead and do something and then be like, oh, I didn't know. No, I mean, I, I would want to have that written into the contract specifically. Um, which is, you know, a common practice that I've, I've done for other stormwater work that uh, that I've been involved in. So the the contractor will know who their who they report to, and um, just like the engineer will know that when they're reviewing an invoice from the contractor, if they see work that's not related to the final design that they've signed off on, um, they're gonna point that out to the contractor and uh, you know we'll we'll do what we need to 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 get that straightened out but I don't I don't think a contractor is going to be willing to risk doing work that they're not certain is going to be paid back and the best way we can ensure that is to be real clear in the contract that the the town has with the the construction contractor um, specifying sort of the chain of command gotcha Okay, so in the interest of time, are there any more questions? I just oh, yeah, a sorry. quick one. Is um, I'm assuming they can't work on all these 10 properties at once. So sure. is there a way, if we were to run out of funds and couldn't get more, how do we determine which homeowner gets left out? I guess it's probably a you. they're on the schedule and if... First come first serve. Yeah, first come first serve. I guess. But all times we, we, we receive we receive funding per site. So let's say you have a site in the town that doesn't decides doesn't want to go through with it or drops out. Those funds are still in the agreement, and we could reallocate that to one of the other ones. If we request additional funds, it'll be based on the request that you submit. So if you've got, I mean, you could potentially have more than one contractor bidding. So you could have three contracts for contracting services if you wanted to. It's up to how you, the RPC wants to bid this out, but. Um, okay. I mean, some of these some of these projects are realistically an afternoon, you know, uh, removing two trees, cleaning out a, a ditch. Some of them are certainly more involved uh, than that, but, um, 
you know, I don't think we've made any decisions about contractors. The the fewer the contractors, the easier it is from a, a preparing contract standpoint. But if we don't get any construction contractors that indicate either willingness or ability to do all 10 projects, we would certainly bring on additional contractors so we can meet the obligations of our agreement with NRCS and, and in particular, make sure. sure that we get everything done within the, the deadline. Thank you. Uh, Vic. Yeah, the only thing I just wanted to bring up uh, Adrian's comment there about the, and uh, about telling the uh, property owner that they would are taking their twenty five percent. I mean, we just said that they're going to pay a hundred percent. It just doesn't sounds like almost like a security deposit that you get back yeah. if it. I mean, I understand as long as we're transparent about it, saying. <laughs> We're, uh, you know, it's, they're supposed to pay 100%, but, you know, in case they don't, uh, I think we should tell them. Of course. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. they're under the, I've already told them that, that they're going to pay, that no. they have to pay 25%. Because we didn't know and about this till this morning. This is new information. So um, now you're going back and telling them, I mean, wouldn't you tell them that they, get, that they don't have to do that? She was just suggesting that if there was ever a concern that we actually had to come back to the homeowner for money, they are all aware that that they would have had to come up with 25%. For us to now say, well, it's going to be covered 100%, we think. We're crossing our fingers and hoping. Um, we don't want the tap to go back to them and say, oops, it's actually costing 10% more. Can you give us the money for it is really... And it doesn't sound like that's a really hey. high probability, but right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we don't have to do that. The but. concern was when I first spoke to Sarah that if homeowners didn't pay that 25%, the town was on the hook for it. And that was not okay. That's not, and, and that's so, not the case. So it's not the case now, but getting that 25% ahead of time assured that the town would not be on the hook for it. Yeah. And right. it could be worded to the, to the individuals, landowners that you know, it's for cost overrun. If if we're, you know, the anticipation is that based on the bid, it's going to be paid 100%. If there's a cost overrun, that 25% or, or whatever that yeah. that number would be would come from the homeowner. If we can't get it from here. Potentially. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. No, I would absolutely tell them. Okay. I mean, they're all going to be ecstatic. They may be on the phone right now. Right. right. Um, Zara. Meeting was happening. Sorry, you just my question. my comment is from listening to these gentlemen is that the work would have to stop if if there was a cost overrun anyway, and then that cost would be paid for. So I think twenty five percent is is a lot to ask for, especially if we're not going to get paid if they're not going to get paid back if it does overrun. Um, do you understand? So if we have to stop, if you, they have to stop work on their location and then ask for more money, if it does overrun, then it doesn't make sense for them to prepay if it's not going to get paid back then. Yes, sir. I think there might be a legal issue about whether or not a municipality can take money like that. Right. Yeah. All right. We don't have to do it. I mean, yeah. We don't have to do it. We're not right. in that position anymore. Yeah, we're not in that position. Right. right? We so were. I would say that it, it probably is Thank easier. you so much for asking it. Yeah. Patrick Wood. Yeah, I first just thank you everybody for all your work on this. I'm one of the uh, homeowners, landowners, and um, and so, but just on this subject, like, I don't know everybody's project, but it's not small amounts of money, the 25% uh, for some of them. And so, yeah, we just worry for some folks, it might be hard to come up with that 25% when they don't need to. Um, so hopefully it sounds like it's not necessary. Um, I will certainly try and come up with it if it is necessary, because I really want this project to go forward. But just if you're asking for it like a security deposit, just please keep in mind that it may be really hard for some people to come up with that. Thanks. Okay, so are there any other questions for the um, experts on the Zoom, Brian and Michael? No? Okay. So now we're at a point where we need to vote whether or not we, as a select board, want to move forward with this, knowing what we know, um, hoping for the worst, knowing that could be, I mean, hoping for the best, rather, <laughs> and knowing there could be, there, there could be points where maybe everyone's project doesn't get completed. 
um, and knowing what our responsibilities are as the financial side of this and as the sponsor, knowing that CBRPC um, is going to be supporting us in many ways to make this a successful project. Um, is there a motion to um, approve? Is this what we're doing? Like we signed something, but what are we doing? Approving to participate in this program, the emergency watershed program agreement? We're agreeing. Well, they wanted us to sign a contract. The last document that I sent you was an actual agreement, but that would have to be redone based on this new information, correct? They did issue an amendment uh, as well. Right, we'll do an amendment. Okay. So is there a motion? I would make that motion. Okay, so Randy's going to move that we sign the agreement with an amendment that would be coming. Peter, are you seconding it? A second, I guess. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay, so all those in favor of signing the agreement for the emergency watershed program with the amendment based on what we just learned tonight, say aye. 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 All righty, that's it. Great. Thank you so much, Brian and Michael, for coming and explaining this to us. Um, and if there are homeowners, thank you for coming. Um, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. If you want to know what happens at a select board meeting, it's really <laughs> exciting. Um, okay, so um, we are going to now move. Do we? So do we have something we're going to, somebody's no, going to give us. They're going to have to send the yeah. amendment. Okay. Mike, will you send the amendment to Dorinda? He's going. Uh, Mike is not. Oh, he, he, he just he just dropped off, but I believe what I heard him say earlier was that that um, that their agreement, their in-house agreement, will be finalized next week. And if you sign the the agreement that he's already sent out, um, we can submit that to him, and then he will provide a contract amendment uh, that you would then just need to authorize as well. Thanks. Brian. Okay. Thank you. All righty. We're behind my schedule, but it's 525. It's not 525. It's 538, and it's the Highway Department report. General updates from the Highway Department revisiting the change order proposal for all seasons, non-emergency work, action possible, and considering an access permit for John McCain on Portal Road. Action likely. Take it away, Eric. I do not believe that that uh, in written um change order acceptance from FEMA was done. Do you, do you know? Say that a little bit louder, please. So <clears throat> we need to get in writing the authority to do a change order. Is that, is that- Randy what, asked for that. I don't is that, know. Is that what we're supposed to do? I don't know. That's what we discussed in the last minute. I'm, I'm asking, I wasn't here for a week, so I don't know if that got done or not. I mean, Randy asked for it. Okay. So we need to I, I don't know if it's up to the board or if it's up to Randy. Doesn't matter. Um, so I think it was um I think it was that we wanted to and we didn't revisit it. That I, I wasn't here that last week, was I? Yeah, you were. I was I was here. I, was here that. I mean was I, I just didn't know how it turned out. I don't, I don't have an well, answer. So this is really about rather than if this if I recall, rather than just having the guys say, yeah, no problem, we can do this change order for non-emergency work that maybe it's something that should come to the select board. Is that right, Randy? Yeah, so, I mean, the meeting minutes, I'll read from the meeting yeah, minutes what, what took place. Um, okay, so, the board reviewed a change order for $36,000 on work to be done on Davy Road by all seasons. Uh, Randy said it needed to be put out to bid since it's essentially a different project than what All Seasons was doing this fall when, according to Vic, the excavation company discovered additional work needed to be done. Randy said a uh, six-month time difference between the emergency work that was completed and this work, which would be done in the summer, makes, a, makes it a separate project. Eric said All Seasons couldn't finish the project last fall since winter hit. They will have to complete the work in the summer. And according to Vic, usually that is given to the guy who already has the contract. 
Randy said, if others are more expensive, then all seasons would be awarded the bid. Um, Peter said, presuming this project was going to be FEMA eligible, it should be put out to bid. Randy said he'd be okay with the change order if FEMA gives the go-ahead to all seasons to add this extra work. Liz noted uh, the contract as a specific end date. Um, Peter said that will need to be extended. And Dorinda asked if this was emergency or permanent work. Vic said permanent work. Randy again requested written approval from FEMA's uh, project development manager. The board agreed and tabled the change order until the next meeting that preferably the town FEMA's project coordinator will attend. Okay. So the board agreed to uh, uh, request the FEMA project development Did manager's they? approval. Did they? Is that what that means? That's what they, this. That's what it, this does says. Does that mean they they agreed to table it? The I board thought, the board agreed, and then tabled the change order until the next meeting. Right. We were going. We're, there's nothing in there that we were going to talk to uh, ask Steve. Steve said that they that they did. Uh, Steve's online. Sorry. Oh, it's a different Steve. Oh, is that a different oh, Steve? Oh, wrong Steve. Steve said what? Steve, Steve said, said what? that uh, that uh, he he had talked to. Uh, FEMA and they were on board with it. And that and he said that before we had that meeting. And I thought I brought that up, but evidently just get it. But anyways, with that said, is that what we're going to do continually? Because that's one of the big questions in this work that's coming up. Is what about changing? <laughs> so I think that I mean I, here, are gonna, I'm here. not arguing with you, yeah. uh, Randy. It's just it's my belief that it's it's kind of like that's the way we, we do that's the way this has always been done. I I think that the and sorry. No, go ahead. I, I think Randy. that the difference here for uh is the timeline between uh the existing contract and the and the time that they're gonna execute any kind of work that was added to it wasn't approved during when they were at the uh at the site doing work, there wasn't a change order produced at that point. Um, I think it was. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, let's let's let yeah let's get let's. Yeah. So really, what we're talking about? Let me just ask this because I don't know anything about change orders. Okay. Work was started in the summer and fall, and we knew that sometimes it couldn't be finished till the spring. And, um, and, you know, they had gotten a bid mm -hmm. uh, based on, you know, your review of the bid and it was going to cost $250,000. Then they may say, well, we're finishing up in the spring, but the price of gravel has gone up. And so have we given raises to everybody. So it's actually going to be two seventy-five. dollars It's $25,000 change order. You anticipate that that's, or you know, because you're in this business, that that happens on a regular basis. Yes. Okay. So the question is then, is FEMA okay with these change orders right. as just a practice that we do? Like that we accept every change order from a contract that we've already engaged in. We may need to extend the contract, um, but we don't have to go out to bid. Is that what this is about? Hold on, Peter. Yes, basically, basically, yes. It, it, but uh, I think, in all fairness, uh, somebody's got to ask FEMA, and hey, writing is the best way to get it improved. Yeah, my and my All understanding right, is that. that it sounds like Steve's already talked with them about it, and it's a non-issue. So getting it in writing is a way to show anybody down the line that that we yeah, mentioned them and they said yes. Yeah, Peter. So I was just going to say as a comment, and this is mostly building construction, not not road construction. But I've been involved over the years with a lot of a lot of construction projects, and the practice I've seen out there in the industry, unless there's some outrageous difference, like the original contractor hasn't been able to perform, or you know who knows something like that. Uh, that routine trade order, change orders would be approved with the same contractor. And uh, I also think that's the most efficient way to do it. I agree 100% with Randy that we need to get 
confirmation from FEMA, and we should get it in writing, that they agree to this method. Because if they all of a sudden turn around and say, oh, no, you should have put it out to bid, so we won't reimburse it, that would be bad. So, Vic, do you understand what you, you're going to communicate to Steve, and he's going to contact the FEMA rep to ask these questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do. I talked to okay. him tonight, and then, uh, of course, he won't be back until, what, 2nd of uh, March? 29th. Oh, yeah, okay. back in town. Okay. Do they need a sign? Okay. Are we, can you just can can I move on with that thought just a little bit? Yep. Okay. So in our in our uh, we got a lot of questions. We got a lot of contractors that are interested in uh, in this uh, work. Uh, ah. Okay. You're not allowed to talk about it. Why? Because the bids are out, and they need to be returned sealed. Before the board. That's fine. Say that last part again, please. The bids are out. They are, and they do have a deadline of March 12th. Mm -hmm. Well, there will be the the sealed bids will be opened at a select board meeting. So I'm board. not affecting the sealed bids. What I'm saying. I'm just saying, be careful, please. Okay. 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 So lots of contractors are interested. Yeah. So there's a lot of questions that I can't answer. I don't think Eric can answer. And one of the questions is, how are we going to handle change orders? Right. Oh, that's an actual question that they asked. Yes. So yeah. I, what's going to happen is we're compiling all these questions, yeah. and we're going to put those questions all out to all the contractors yeah. answered, so that all the contractors can see what the questions are and see what the answers are. But we have to answer them at some point. Right. So, so we're going to have to get on the 1st of March or 2nd of March to do yeah, that? We're going to have to pay, yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Are you doing a site visit with them? I I brought a couple around already, just to show them the road. But you can't see anything. Yeah. Randy. I I would just suggest that if this is a question that we feel like we can't answer, it's the perfect time. If we're already going to them to ask this question and get their yeah. approval on this, it's the perfect yeah. perfect time to to get the answer from them to say. This is how you need to handle it and develop yeah and develop the answer for for the contractors okay and and on that same topic um of uh of the, of the thing with it are, <clears throat> are we getting into a you know where we might be liable for something uh i don't know is you know i've had i've said something about it a couple of times to eric but he still does it is uh I don't think that we should be going around with it. I uh, think I thought, that we should have a pre-bid meeting. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's one, what I was asking. Have one, one meeting with everybody. Everybody. And all then you can't business. say, and then yes. you can't, the guy can't come back. Well, gee, so-and-so told me this. Or so -and -so. No, I agree. I think that that's what that's I'm fine. We can do that. Who did I caught Michelle. Though. Okay. Um, no, that's what I was asking. Is there a date that is set that you invite anyone who wants to bid? There to is not see? one right now. Okay. But maybe we should pull them in. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Would you do, can you do that? Yeah. That'd be great. Michelle, did you have a question? No? Okay. Um, we thought maybe your hand was up. <laughs> oh, I, I'm very theatrical. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that Zoom, if you raise your physical hand... It notices and does the virtual oh. hand. Oh, it does. mine does. <laughs> but yours did not do that. So, no. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, so you and this is for like all the pro like what, I don't even know what the bid looked like, but I mean what the mm -hmm. request was. But it, you would you would have a date yeah. and you would I say we yeah. can come up with that. Okay, easily. All right. Um, so we're not move. We're not going to take any action on this, right? We don't need a motion for Steve to no. contact FEMA. Mm -hmm. But I think that it would be helpful. Um, he gets back on the second. Yeah. First. So or the no, first. No. Is that is He's that enough time? Yeah, he gets back to 29th. He's okay. available starting the first. Okay. And is that enough time for you? We can we'll yes, we will okay. we will get stuff together. Right. So hopefully by the meeting after that, when he gets back, we would have some more information, yes, right? Definitely. Okay. Awesome. But not asking these questions because we're worried about the bids aren't being opened. That yeah, boy. We're going to, no, I said because we are. Yeah. I yeah. say I agree with it. <laughs> the, uh, the, pro, the, the issue is 
I'm sure that there's going to be a, quite a lot of discussion with this select board after. And we've got to do it. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to hash this stuff out. There's a lot of, yep. there's questions that are, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that we won't be in, you know, be liable for this. How's our liability insurance, Peter? Liable for what, Vic? <laughs> Broad and carefully addressed by the League of Cities and Towns. Okay. I don't understand why you why you think we would be liable, Victor. Liable for what? I don't understand. For not being, uh, we're not, we're not. Th this idea that uh, these these contractors are used to working with people that have plans, they have spec specs, with the plans, they know what what is going to happen, where it's going to happen, and we don't know that. Uh, we don't we know it but they don't and there's no there's no plan there's no description that really shows you uh i i it. thought that that's what happened when you put out a bid you explained like what how how would they know what to bid how would they know how much to bid if they didn't they would just come up with a number of steve came up with numbers from estimating numbers right and that's what he put down for them to bid on we don't have specific, okay, you need 10 loads at this location, 15 loads at this We don't have that. Because we get an overall number for the road. Yeah. And that's, but they don't know that well, number, we, get it, do they? we have to show them the areas to do it in. Okay. But my question is, we don't give them that number. Isn't the whole point of a bid for us to see who comes in at the best rate for that job? Well, no, the state usually gives a uh, quantities, an estimated uh, oh okay. number versus price. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, are you saying, Vic, that um, we are doing this? We're not being helpful to the people who want to bid because we're not providing enough information. Kind of. Okay. But how can we be more helpful? Having a better bid process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, it would. It would probably. Like, is there a sheet or something we can use? Yes. Engineers to do that. What you, yes, sir. Exactly what you that, do. that horse has left the stable. What's that? That horse has left the stable. Well, I was just gonna say FEMA probably has like a a template or something. They do. Okay. And so we're not using that template. I don't know. I'm not a FEMA question. Okay. So maybe we should start using the template for part two. 2024. I mean, otherwise we don't know, right? I mean, does does that make sense to you? I mean, that's correct. The only it's it's it, you know, and I, I hate to say this, but it's kind of like you are not. I shouldn't say I apologize for that, but it's like yeah. when this building is being built. I assume when this building gets built, there'll be a detailed plan of what's going to yeah. be done, what what the contract is going. Yeah. We don't have that. Okay. Maybe we should sure. hire a, a consulting or an engineering firm to do this. And along with that, for the FEMA roads, for the FEMA roads, and along with that, I think, as as has been pointed out, I I use this building as an analogy that they hire a project manager that makes sure they do what we say they're going to do. Okay, but to me, it sounds like if there's a FEMA template, and Steve understands the roads. Steve could fill out this template. May I, may I just, yes. I think what Vic is saying is maybe we need an engineering study on our roads. Maybe what we need to do is procure, go seek a procurement, get an engineer, do an engineering studies on the roads, and get exactly what every road needs, and we'll have all those details. Then with those engineering studies, then we go out to bid with the information from the engineering studies. Does that make sense? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, then instead of the helter skelter way we're doing yeah. it. Yeah. I don't think you have time to do that. Yeah. You're going to be hard pressed to get an engineer. Well, to do Steve these. said that tonight. It won't be done this summer. It won't, won't be done. Be. No. So. And we're in a deadline. All this stuff is supposed to be submitted by a certain date. Yes, it is. It, it, we don't have time okay. for that. Anyway. Okay. Will a site visit help? I mean, these contractors, if they all go out to a site, is it, are they going to have a better understanding of what's needed? Probably. The problem we run into right now is you can't see anything. Because of the snow. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I mean, you know, I don't, we got a lot of questions in there. I don't, yep. everybody, can everybody read, can all the select board read the, the questions? I give you some idea. I can borrow them all on. Yeah, I don't know why why that information isn't, it's all public information. Well, they just, they, the questions just been coming from the Let's technically ask a question. Yep. How long do you think it would take to procure an engineering firm to, you know, set our, you know, RFPs out for engineering firms and bring that whole process and have that done with all the roads? How this, how long do you think that would take? It would take months. I would tell. So we should have done that back last fall, right? Yeah. But would FEMA have paid for that? Yep. Oh. Darn. Well, but the reality too was that we had roads that had to get repaired, right? Because you couldn't travel on them. There was that yeah, piece. That, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was an emergency. Yeah. Okay. So you're, and, and now we're saying there's a disaster deadline. Like the disaster happened. There's a deadline by which all this stuff has to be done. And it's too late to do that. Mm -hmm. So if there is, so if we're not going to do that, is there something that we could do that's better than what we're doing now moving forward? I don't know. I haven't I really. Think, I think so, just having. Yes, Peter. So does it make sense? And I and I realize we've already put the request for bids out there, but does it make sense to have a meeting before the bids are open and say, you know, we're going to go out, out and I understand there's snow on the ground and everything else, but we can at least show you where the project is. You can get some idea, better idea of what it is. We're going to go to FEMA and get all the questions answered before the bids are due, hopefully. Um, and if you choose to amend your bid, you can. But just so we get the best information out there for them to submit a bid. We do have the clause in that <clears throat> in that proposal that uh, the town of Middlesex uh, may uh, how does it, oh we accept or reject all bids. So we don't have to, we do not have to award anything. Is there time to do that, Eric? Is there time for us to get the answers from FEMA and- We'll have to schedule, like we'll have to work on scheduling a site visit with every contractor at the same time, yeah. go over everything at the same, so yeah. they all have the same exact answers. Sarah, and then- Rick. You can also ask for an extension. You can ask for an extension of the whole project. That's right. Okay. Randy? I would suggest that it's not just a site visit, but an informational visit. Yes. Here, starting here first. Yep. So that questions can be answered. I know that when we do this at buildings, you know, you get all the contractors there, somebody sees something on site that somebody hadn't thought about or whatever, or says, hey, can we do this instead of this? You know, um, and just recognizing that just because you put something on paper doesn't mean everything's captured. And that meeting allows you to have with all of the potential bidders that are interested right then and there to potentially make a change to the specification that you've asked for or add something to it before the bid deadline is due. And everybody has the same information at the same time. Yeah, that's important. So I would just suggest that it's an informational meeting and not just a site walkthrough. Okay. It would be handy too, I think, Randy, if you had the time maybe to attend as well. I don't know. It's just be nice to have someone else on the select board. I know you're on the select board, but just a, I, I would have less understanding of what I was hearing. About. Okay, so we're not we don't have to make a motion of that. You have not given us any general updates on the highway department. Is there anything you'd like to share about what's going on? Everything's running so far. Okay. Your trucks are all in order. Okay. Um and Vic, do you have some things you want to say about the agenda? Yeah, I mean, it, it's obvious if uh, you read Front Porch Forum or anything, uh, how bad uh, the uh, sentiment is against our town roads. I mean, uh, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, we're having a meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Oh, for the town? For the planning commission. Oh. And Sandy is going to see... If this planning commission is going to do some work on the roads. I also reached out to our um, legislators yes, about sir. general funds that might be available. Yes, you did. And so um, 
I think that. What did they say? I don't remember, Vic. I have to look on my phone. I, I got did, all these emails I, I, back. I couldn't figure it out. I'm sorry. There was the it's the um, IRJA funds. Anyway, I I don't want to talk about that now. Because no, okay, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. You're... Um, but at any rate, um, you, there could be funds. Would you mind just before going to be same meeting? Would you make sure we do the portal road curb cut? Yes. Um, so we need to consider an access permit for John McCann on Portal Road action likely, and this is it right here, Eric. Any things you want to talk about on this? No, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Rather need a full Okay. It's okay. not going to accept the knowledge drops right on. Okay. So is there a motion? Okay. Uh, Vic has motion that we accept this um, <sighs> byway permit, access permit yeah. on Portal Road. Is there a second? Randy seconds it. All those in favor of approving the I, access. Whoa, 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 I have a question. Yeah. So my understanding is, and I'm not sure I've got this right, but this is going to be the access to a unyet permitted event space. Is that correct? Uh, yes. The wedding. The yeah. wedding. It's, it's an access to a property right now. Okay. The wedding venue. Right. Has that been a but this, is, this isn't a driveway for a residence. This is a driveway for an event space. But, but that has not been approved yet. That right. hasn't even been submitted yet. Yeah. Hasn't been submitted. Well, and well, I'm asking, and, and uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't looked at any of the paperwork, but I mean, we're taking into consideration that there might be, if, if all this gets approved, there might be considerable traffic. So sight lines, Everything else that would be involved in, in the use of that for that has been taken into consideration. This is more than a residential yeah. driveway, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Randy. So uh, given that information, I guess one of the questions that I have is if they were awarded an event permit or whatever needs, whatever's going to come down the line and this access didn't meet the needs of that venue um do we have the room to request changes in this to accommodate the room i don't understand the basically making revisions to the to the uh permissions as part of that venue permit or whatever peter's talking about here and requiring if if they're going to be looking at two-way traffic coming out of uh something making it so a part of a requirement for that would be uh an extension of the of the access and and whatnot i guess that's what i'm asking well don't i would think maybe that would happen when they applied for their construction i mean there's a there's a lot that has to happen i think for this event space to be approved i'm just i'm just concerned that we understand that this is more than a residential driveway Way, and we've at least looked at it to see if it makes sense for having a considerable number of cars in a short period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And none of this, it might be that, you know, this never gets approved and it's not a, not a question. And maybe this isn't the time to consider this. I don't know. But once we, I think the, the short answer is once we approve this, they've got an access permit and they're going to use it for whatever they see fit. Is it Chris McVeigh has a question. So I'm, I'm wondering if you just, if you can approve it, condition it, um, that if this event um, permit goes through, that this will be reevaluated to ensure that there's capacity. So approve it, but condition on uh, uh, future events. Can I, can I, say something? I mean, at this point, that hasn't even been submitted. No. So I know this is all like planning. It. Right. This is all, you know, like I'm hearing about this now. Yeah. So I mean, I guess the question. Is it even in our purview to say that we understand their, their expectations are anything but access to a property at this yeah, point? Yeah, I don't think so either. And everything else should be evaluated when that other yes, venue agree. permitting is, right. is brought to us. And that's why I asked the question is, could we then revise and make that a condition at that point to say, you've got to extend? The but that, I don't think this. that would even be us necessarily. So, yeah. That would be the BRB. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of questions here, so I want to make sure everybody gets a turn to talk. Shelly, you have your hand raised. No, yes, I'm just saying. Oh, oh, oh sorry. There's two. Well, there's Shelly and Michelle. Go, I Michelle. And then, Michelle, I'll call on you. So, Shelly. Oh, okay. 
Uh, the quick question I have, Sarah, is this the same person that said he was not going to be building on his property when he was in the office with me last week with Annette? So, Shelly, yes, that is, that is the same person. That's uh, the one who came with his lawyer? Yes. That's the same guy. Okay, because my understanding is that you could not build anything on that property the way he was spoke with his lawyer. It is it is way, 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 what the use of this property is way far down the road. So the planning commissioner, the DRB, will take the take into account all the things that all the factors you're bringing up. And will they uh, let us know? My experience, I've never I have never known anybody to deny access to a property based on what may or may not happen. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Michelle um, Johnston. No, Sarah said what I was going to say. Okay, and Randall. So um, I had a chance to listen to uh, John McCann's testimony uh, to the House Committee on Agriculture, Food Resiliency, and Forestry um, that happened on Valentine's Day. And um, the transcript, the video transcripts available online, you can look at it. But at one point in time, Mr. McCann stated that the driveway permit or the access permit had already been approved by the town of Middlesex. Those were his words in the uh, in the testimony. So you might want to look at that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. See, I mean, can I just say who was yeah. that? That was Randall. Randall, Randall, what's your last name? Joslin. So my yeah, my last name is Joslin. Okay. okay. This is not the venue for yeah. this. This is simply an access permit. Yeah, so we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna move on with um, the uh, agenda item, which is approving the access permit. Do I have a motion? Yes, yeah, they, they moved and Randy second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving this access uh, permit, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Great. All right. So thank you all for, if you came for that reason, thank you. Um, so anything more about the highway before we move on? Okay, so it's, it's we're, we're past our time. We are now at 6 p.m. We're gonna, we're going to, I know it's supposed to be 6 p.m. That's all right. We are going to break for the BCA meeting um, and then we will come back to do the Middlesex Fire Department and the Treasurer's Report. So do we have- BCA. Agenda. Do we have anyone online that's on the BCA? Theo. Looks like he is. Sure, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, John's here. Hi, John. Hi. How are you? All right. How's it going? I'm good. Thank you. So Theo, you are here. Is there anyone else on there that's on the uh, BCA besides Theo online? Theo, are you? Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, you. sorry. Only, okay, only Theo. Okay. And Chris, you're here for the BCA. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry guys, that's a crazy day. Uh, <laughs> Right. Okay, so we're um, calling the BCA meeting to order at 610. Um, and who's here? Theo is on. Yeah, we've got Theo here, and we have Chris, we have John Demeter. Um, I forget who else is on it. Vic, Randy, everybody, Peter, but... Liz, Dorinda, the gang's all here, Sarah Merriman. All right, so approving processing of March 5th, 2024 town ballots on March 4th, 2024, authorizing the town clerk, J.P. Dorinda Crowell, and assistant clerk, Shell Granfield, to open signature envelopes containing the presidential primary town WCUUSD and CVCC ballots, depositing the WCCUUSD and CVCC ballots in separate secured locked ballot boxes and running the town and presidential primary ballots through the tabulator in town hall on Monday, March 4th. Actually, yeah, Mar Monday, March 4th, action likely. Okay, is there discussion about this? Okay, so Chris, I just have a quick, um, WCC, WCUUSD has people on it, like to vote into the 
yeah. and, and as well as the budget. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I was just going to say, is is there going to be a change to that? There probably would be a change to the budget because um, chances are that legislature is going to ask the legislation to take away the five percent cap, and we'll move back the start time. I think it's probably going to be March fifteenth or April fifteenth. I think it's going to be the new vote date for the budget. If that goes through. Okay. So are the ballots already created with that number on it? I believe they are. And so then people will vote and it just won't be counted? They, they won't be counted. Okay. So they'll still use that same piece of paper with with the other with other the names of the people and stuff. Okay. All right. Any other discussions? Okay. Is there a motion? Move I move. Second. Okay, Sarah moves and second. and Chris seconds. Um, all those in favor of proving processing on March 5th. 2024 town ballots on March 4th. Say aye. 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 Okay. Everybody says aye. Thank you. Alrighty. So March 5th, 2024 presidential primary town school voting. Approval of the following ballot clerks for the March 5th, 2024 town meeting by Australian ballot in Romney School. Jane Tucker, Betsy Davis, Joanne Mankoff, along with any Middlesex voters selected by the town clerk. I already have uh, confirmation from Susan Warren and Paul. Nice. Okay. Or anyone else that may come before you. All right. Any questions and or discussion? No. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Dorinda moves. Who seconds? Second. Okay. Chris seconds. All those in favor of the March 5th presidential primary town school voting say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then next, appointing J.P. Dorinda Crowell and Cheryl Granfield as assistant election officials for all 2024 elections, including the March, March 1st. It should be March 5th. March 5th voting. Yeah. Action likely. Any discussion? Okay, is there a motion? Randy moves, is there a second? Oh, second, Peter. Okay, Peter had seconded. All those in favor of appointing JP Dorinda Crowell and Cheryl Granfield as assistant election officials for all 2024 elections, um, say aye. 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 Okay, designating BCA members to the following assignments. So we've got, we don't have names, but. We need four people to follow. Yep. Here. So 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's election night. So right. three, five. I um, volunteer. Uh, Theo does. Okay. And who else? Um, I guess I'll volunteer. Liz. John, you want to volunteer? I'm afraid I'm out of town. Now. Oh, John. Oh, how convenient. Okay. Uh, Chris, you want to volunteer? Um, well, I think it'll be. Oh, you did it. Okay. Uh, Vic, do you want to volunteer? Have COVID. What? You're gonna have COVID. Come on, I need a volunteer, Randy. And you do the can't. I guess you can. You're a JP. We trust you, even though you're on the oh, you're not on the couch. What happened to Jan? Jan is in South Africa for a wedding, and she said, and I quote, sign me up for anything. Okay, Jan. Okay. <laughs> Got Jan. Okay. So we need one more person because so we, need we a have Theo, person. Liz. We don't have John. Vic has COVID. What what is uh what else we have? We Chris can't do it, we said. Chris is going to take the ballots. Over Dorinda, you. would you like to do it with us? Well, I'm going to be there one way or the other. <laughs> okay, so. so we're putting down Dorinda. Whatever. Okay. And, Thank uh, you, Dorinda. Uh, uh, that's true. Is that from seven to eight? Yes. Okay. I'd also appreciate anybody who wants to come volunteer to help with the ballots on election day, the ministry. So it's a good way. It to just occurred to me that it's possible that town meeting will still be happening at That's seven. Correct. So maybe yeah. I shouldn't be somebody. But somebody has to, there might be, who knows? I mean, this could go on. I, well, I'm happy here, Sarah. I'm, I'm a little confused. Aren't we talking about March 5th? Yep. Okay. Sure. So do you need other volunteers at other times during the day, Sarah? If you're available, I wouldn't say no. But you have to well, be a BCA. No, so, I mean, so to, to do the to, to count the ballots, you know, I would prefer to have BCA members because I think you guys have all your JPs, you've taken oaths. It shouldn't take too long to do all what we're going to do. What about Mary Skinner? She's not here. No. Um, so the uh, anyway, I'm just we'll we'll talk later. OK. Yeah. OK. So just but on, but on Tuesday night, on, on March 5th, we need people to go through the ballots and make sure that they're, you know, and what the drill is. Yeah. So maybe we make a motion that we have these people and anyone else that may come before mm -hmm. to do the ballot counting. Yeah, that's fine. But what about the, but how about the BCA members for, for Thursday night, for Tuesday, for the March 5th? We have Theo and we have maybe you, Jan. 
Jan is where I think we could. It's possible that I could, but oh, uh, it's it's very. So you've got Dorinda. Uh, there's we an event Dorinda. that if it happens, I cannot be here. I see. Okay, so possibility. But it doesn't have to be a BCA member. Like Lowry could do it. Good. Yeah, we could just we'll just swear them in. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, perfect. So someone could be sworn in. All right. So for now, we're going to do these four people with potential for okay, other people we'll to be thrown in. Is there a, is there a motion? No, we don't need a motion. Okay. Um, what we do need, we, we can only have JP's transport ballots. Okay. Who is the JP going to transport? Chris and who else? Jan. Jan. Okay. Don't you think Jan she said sign yeah. up yeah, for yeah, anything? Yeah. And then C C B C C ballots. I cannot I cannot be there that day. So I need someone to um take those. Well, I'm working very. Uh well, can you be there by 9 a.m.? I can try. Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. So, if it's, it's, if it's, it's just, just transporting, I can come. I, he gets it very far earlier than I do. Let me just you have to transport and you have to stand there while they run them through the it really should be a JP. I can okay. do it. That's yeah. early for you. Oh God, no, it's not. I think it's up at the crack of dawn. So do we need a motion for these designating BCA for yeah, all we'll these? Just have to get these all worked okay, out. so so that's gonna be Dorinda on yep. three seven. Yep. Okay. I did it. Any other matters that may come before the Middlesex Board of Civil Authority? Uh no, I've got an interesting situation. I'm just gonna run by really quickly. Um I a uh, certain person has died. Oh who was sent absentee ballot. Who was sent one? Who was sent one. And that absentee ballot may be winging its way toward us. Before we decide to run it through a tabulator or not, what do I do? Oh, they voted and then they died. They voted and then they died. Well, you know, this happened to my father, and I think it's not allowed. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can't count the vote of a dead person. No, that's I know. True. I know. I just, I'm getting yeah. into the BCA. I'm pretty sure I read, went yeah. to yeah. the BCA meeting, and that's what they well, said. Well, we found Chicago rules. Or middle sex rules. <laughs> That's all I want to know. Thank you very much. Yes, I think I really, yes, I have to have it. Okay, Sarah, do you need any help on election day at any, any of those shifts or you're covered? I'm going to say yes because I always need help. Okay. So I, and it started at 7 p.m. We'll start. We'll t I'll, I'll talk later when I get my schedule all worked out. Okay, thank you. Just email and I'll try to volunteer for some of that. Okay. Oh, you are? Yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So, any other matters that may come before the Board of Civil Authority at this very Vic civil meeting? Vic has a question. Right. Who does? Vic. Vic. Oh, yes, Vic. Sarah's going to say that one more time. The person voted. They voted. They put their ballot in the mail. And, and then they, they died. Then they died. So they voted before they died. Yeah, but I don't believe it It counts. I think, but we can voting check. day is not until the day yeah. March 5th, and that's why it doesn't count. They wouldn't be eligible to vote as of that day. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's Because they don't get, the votes don't get counted. You can right. mail they them in right. months in advance. They don't get counted. Convenience right. to yep. mail them in early. Yeah. All righty. Um, so adjourned. Uh, we are adjourning the meeting at 6 20. Okay, thank you. All righty. Now, uh, thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Thanks for coming, John. You can take the rest of the meeting if you want. Thank you. All righty. So, uh, we are back to our regular scheduled select board meeting. And we are now, I believe we finished with the highway department. Is that right, Eric? Okay. So, 5 35. Um, we're a little behind schedule. Okay. We're at the monthly meeting of the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department at 620. Okay, so we've had nine calls for the last period. Um 16 total for the year. Thanks, Chris. We did have mutual aid in uh, on one call. Our max response was uh, nine members, so that's pretty good. Hmm. Uh men is sticking at three and we've upped a little bit. We're 4.7 for average. Um Despite nine calls, you don't see the vehicles went out that often because two of the calls were responded to by POV uh, and two VSP graciously canceled us before we even got on the road. Um, those are both on the VSP ones are on 89. Um, so 89 was a popular uh, thing this last week between vehicle accidents, vehicle fires. Um, so and there was one that was on the 3rd of February. It was Dispatch wasn't sure if it was us or it was Montpelier, so they responded to both of us. 
and it ended up not being really anything. Uh, so as is many times on the interstate, people have their cell phones and they're driving by. Don't stop, see what's going on, and keep on talking. But um, so this is nine calls. As we're getting back into more kind of the average of what we're getting than we have been in the past. Um, as far as the call that was um, we had mutual aid in, it was a structure fire on Lower Sunnybrook. Um, Waterbury came with their engine and tankers. We had our engines and tanker. Um, Montpelier came with their engine. Berlin came with their tanker. Uh, Moortown came with their tanker. Obviously, water is a thing. Lower Sunnybrook Road, the closest water asset to us is a Montpelier hydrant. Well, that one we hit was frozen. The next one we hit was frozen. The third one, right on Cemetery Curve, worked. So that was a little bit of an issue, uh, but made for an exciting thing. Uh, but being a trailer fire, those never turn out well. Uh, so it was a total loss. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just the nature of trailers. So um, as far as training, we did vehicle driving, getting um, people spun up on all the vehicles. Um, so it's not relying on a few. Repairs, we're still trying to figure out what the <clears throat> electric problem is on the tanker uh, for the brake lights. And rescue one is a sensor issue. And if anybody's familiar with emission control sensors, it can be problematic. <laughs> Uh, we did buy two new pagers for the new two new people on the department so they can get uh, calls. Basquad had a total of 11 calls. Seven of those were medical only calls. Any questions? Queries, Bowser. Were any of the vehicle fires electric cars? No, thank goodness. Good. Well, still be Glad to hear that. Put water. <laughs> if your car catches on fire, list, just get away. I will. I and, believe and me. I, along with the lithium battery thing, um, I saw Green Mountain Powers joining with some electrician to install walls. Um, my concern with those walls, number one, power walls. Yeah, mm -hmm. that we don't know they're in there. Mm. Number two, if the house were happening to catch on fire and it's not a result of the wall, it's just the house catches on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd be nice to know that there's one in there so we can protect that from going thermal. That's an interesting, I mean, I wonder if there's a way to like do perhaps some sort of query um, so that you guys as a volunteer fire department know which houses have those. I mean, if I were a homeowner and I had one, I would be happy to give that information to my volunteer fire department so that they knew so that if you did get a call, you know, you could check out your spreadsheet and see who has a power well or there's huh. something maybe on the outside of the house that says this house has a power wall that would be really nice and maybe we should come up with a standardized sign yeah sign something like that mm -hmm. i think that's a good idea so then you're yes peter and then I Zara. yes i would just suggest the outside sign is the best approach because it might not be our fire department responding yes perfect so i mean it yeah. could be Worcester could be Montpelier. And it could be this house has an electric car or this house has an electric power wall, and then they know. Okay, Zara? Uh, as somebody who used to sell labels, I'm going to recommend an inside wall, uh, window cling like they used to have back in the 70s and 80s, children in this room or things like that so that it it's not affected by weather it's not covered up by the snow it's in the window because it obviously that's going to be installed in a garage or a home well it's something we would want to have standardized yeah so yes the location is standardized the sign is standardized so when whoever rolls up and maybe it's a couple of years and those of us on the department on, aren't on anymore it's still the same standard people know where to look and it should be something that's done community-wide, not just in Middlesex, so that, you know. Well, that's baby steps. I know, but we'll be the we'll be the trendsetters. How about that? So you research that. Find out what kind of uh, will, emblem we could put I will on. I have someone on the department. Awesome. Yay. Yes, Steve. Um, so I actually, I actually worked for a solar company a couple of years back, uh, and I installed a lot of, like, uh, Tesla power walls and... Uh, 
end phase energy uh, battery systems. And so it is in the state of Vermont, a standard requirement for like photovoltaic systems. So like your solar systems to have labeling on the outside next to your main means of disconnect to show that. And I think it would be a really easy thing for Middlesex to pass a zoning ordinance to require the labeling for a battery backup system on that same means of disconnect outside as well. Um, and that would be an easy solution for that. I think that way, so the fire department gets there, you're going to go for the main means of disconnect to shut the electricity off, I'd imagine, in a lot of cases anyway. So you'd be able to see the labeling right there at the power source for the house. Actually, we call in the power company to disconnect. We don't we don't disconnect it. Uh, we call in the power company because we're not trained to do that. Um, our disconnect may not be. So, so I guess so. Even though, even though the there's a, a disconnect requirement for emergency services on the outside of the house or somebody with like solar or something, you guys aren't actually allowed to flip that disconnect. You call the power company anyway. Call the power company to handle the power problems because we're not we are not trained to handle handle the power problems. So that's their bailiwick. It's just like on this fire on on uh, Shady Rail, there was a question whether the neutral line was grounding out onto the cable line and causing problems with another house, the next house up the road as a result of the fire. And so between the power company and the cable company, they determined that it wasn't grounding on the, the cable line, but apparently that's not an uncommon thing. So okay. um, leave that to the other thing with having the sign on the disconnect area is for me as a responder, I'd rather have it where I roll up on the scene and see it as soon as I roll up. Uh, if I have to go around behind the house to find it in this type of, this time of year, it may be a hard call to get around to see where the disconnect is. But if I see it when I roll up, be it on the, by the garage door or on the front door or something, as soon as I roll up, I see it. That, that to me, as a responder, a, a, a more yeah, advantageous yeah. thing for us. Yes, Steve? Uh, hold on. I'm looking up a contact phone number for the Vermont Electrical. Um, uh, what's Dennis's last name? Um, I don't have Dennis's last name, but I believe he's taken over for uh, as the head inspector for the state of Vermont. I can get that contact information to you if you want, because um, it'd probably benefit us to coordinate with the. Uh, the Vermont Electrical Board because they they could help also pass some type of policy either for the, the town or at the state level as well if we thought that was a good idea. Sure, if you want to get that to Sarah, she'll get it to me. Yeah, I think that's great because these it. things are new, you know, and I'm sure that people don't even think about the fact that somebody's house could burn down, right, and that this could be an issue. So that's great. Thank you for bringing that up, and thank you, Steve, for giving the information. Um, so are there any other questions for the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department? Uh, yes. I have one quick question. Where do, where do we stand with our old rescue? Have we sold that? Have we stripped all the equipment out of it? Where, where does that stand? You ready to park it in your driveway? Sure. And now we're waiting till spring till till uh, our fifth season is over uh, and then bring it out to, to put it up for sale. But we've, we've stripped all the, everything we're gonna take off of it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for our, thank you for your service and thank you your volunteers for our service. Um, alrighty, so now we're on to the treasurer's report, reviewing ARPA projects for possible close out of funds, action plus. Before you get into the ARPA funds, um, do you, Peter, do you have an app update on those wealth park invoices? So uh, the update is that uh, the attorney has all the paperwork she requested and she's supposed to get back to us this week. So I'm hoping we will have an agreement uh, that can be signed before March 15th or whatever the drop dead date is for the insurance Dorinda and the other reports. Okay, so those three don't, still don't pay those three invoices? Right, right. 
she seemed to think she seemed to think that she could she could get it done pretty quickly. Um, I just I just hate to pay those invoices and then have to go back and you know cancel the policy or or do whatever or try and get the money back. Um, the one invoice the the is is going to be I believe paid by the uh, by the developer the, the manager of the phone company building. But we've got to get through the process. Okay, no problem. But it is underway. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else before we talk about ARPA projects? I think that's it. Okay. Sarah? I just want to say that the uh, minutes I gave you from April 2022 yeah. have all the ARPA sites. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah, Bye, John. All right. So, um, and yeah. I, before Eric runs out the door, yes. I want to. Um, Mention which he pointed out tonight that in last year's budget for the current year we're in, mm -hmm. we appropriated fifty thousand dollars for gravel. Oh, from so, ARPA. Yeah, from yeah. ARPA funds. So that has not come off of anything yet. But did we so, spend it? Huh? We have not spent it. We have not, not spent it, it okay. yet, but we did appropriate, so we have actually okay. fifty thousand less. So two ninety five. Two ninety four nine zero seven. So we gave a hundred thousand to CD Fiber. Yeah, seventy four. We gave turnout pass. gear, or was it? We have a door. We didn't do turn out here. We did air packs. That's did, not on here. Oh yeah, did the yeah. But it was seventy thousand. Seventy thousand is that what you said? Yeah, seventy thousand yeah. for air packs. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did. That's all we did. That's all we did. I thought we did. I thought we helped buy the rescue vehicle. Well, so the way that worked was we took all of our fund balances that we had available, which included ARPA funds mm -hmm. and our fund balance, and we used that to support the flood effort and also it paid for. The rescue vehicle, so we didn't have to go out. And so it depends where you want to say you took it from. So we say we took it from ARPA. We've been giving them a lot. Well, <laughs> it all goes to the same. It all goes to the same place, right? I made that comment. I heard comment. What? That we've we given them a lot, them. right? Well, if we gave them that, so that's so we spent how much already? One eighty, one ninety-five. That's it. Is that right? I thought you said two something. No. So two ninety five is what's left, approximately. How I mean, much? You spent two ninety four nine zero seven is left. Is what's left. So you spent one hundred thousand dollars on CB fiber, seventy thousand dollars on air packs, and fifty thousand dollars on gravel. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, fifty thousand on gravel. Five of, right? Five well. So does that two ninety four include that fifty? The, the gravel, owl, the owl and stuff that we bought, did that come out of our money? Yeah, we just took it out of the budget. Okay. Because it was half of what we uh, what we said. You uh, gave me two thousand, and I spent about a thousand. Yeah. So we just took it out. So, but uh, it was more than it wasn't we exactly five hundred, was it? The air? No, it was five hundred and fifteen. I know seven. Uh, it was five fifteen. Yeah, something like okay. that. Okay. So five hundred and fifteen. So that two ninety four is after the fifty thousand, right? Yes. Okay. It's after all all money. So the so we the, essentially have three hundred thousand left. Yeah. Okay. And we have to spend it by the date again. We that? have to allocate it by December thirty first. Okay. The recommendation from Vermont League and City and Town is ASAP. We just might as well put in yep. spend it. Um, we didn't, so we didn't remember the um, salary increase is already implemented. We didn't need that from ARPA. Well, it's how you ever, so what you got to do is think about everything you've spent money on so far and even yeah. want to allocate it yeah. to come out of ARPA funds or, you know, cause it's all been money that's been expended. Yeah. So if it's the rescue vehicle, if it's, mm -hmm. you know, the money to, for employee retention or whatever. Yeah. Or excavator. Yes, there's a lot of things that it could yeah. go to that. It's all basically services. Yep. Well, I mean, I don't think we have to decide tonight, but 
what are some are there is there anything else that is that's on this list or that's not on this list that has come about in our needs that's not on here So we didn't need the 30K for town hall planning because that was covered by just a couple thousand and it's required for that. So we didn't need that. And did we spend 35 on the town garage? Nope. Oh. Heating system, nope. But we, we, may be able to... we have a we have a failing heating system. We better not leave that one on. Well, Merp can help us with that. Oh, okay. Yep. But I thought I thought Merp. Merp wasn't going to even look at the town oh, garage. Oh, but they're not going. You're right. They're not going to the town garage. No, they're doing the fire department with that heating system yeah. back there, but not the town garage. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there are some, I know that there are some like really super low interest loans for energy resilience for municipalities that are different from Merp that we could potentially uh, utilize. They're not out yet, but for something like that, that as opposed to paying for it. Yeah, but why would you want to pay interest on money you've got sitting in the bank that's not earning an interest? Well, in case we wanted to spend this on something else and we knew that there was a low interest loan for So the other thing that jumped out at me here that I had kind of forgotten is, you know, we've got a hundred and well, depending on how you look at it, $130,000 of money dedicated to the town hall. Um, we're going to know a lot more after the town meeting vote where we're going with the town hall and whether we're going to be able to get that money for Merck or whether we need to make renovations to our existing town hall or what we're going to do. So I think that's going to have a lot to say about how and where the money goes. Yep. That is a good point. We could maybe save some to reduce the amount that we would need to borrow if, yeah, we don't need to decide tonight. I mean, no, I, that... I'm just, but I'm just saying that's one reason to defer any kind of decision is to wait until after that vote. That's a big enough project and the loan is extended for a period of time where I feel like it makes less impact there than it would for more immediate needs, more short-term lending that we might be looking at. Yeah, okay. So we have to file an opera report by March 31st. So if we're going to claim this, uh, the balance of the money that's sitting in the fund, it's got to be by that date. Otherwise, you'll have to, it will be the following. Is there any reason, like at one point you and I talked it, and we had gone through some of those seminars that there was a lot of suggestion about just claiming it, the amount of money that we got was allowable to just claim under like general services general and service. stuff. That's I mean, what I've been like, why not just do it that way and get it off from our yeah. radar? Yeah. No. And we can, we can utilize this money however we need to, you know, it essentially moves the fund balance, right? And if in that case, and um, then no matter, there's no timeline ticking on when we have to make this decision sure. or, you know, we can, we can allocate the money out of the fund balance to do whatever it is we feel like we need to do when that time comes, whether it's whether it's the conversation about the excavator or gravel or you know the the heating system for the town town garage or whatever. I mean, it just seems like that's the path of least resistance and gives us the most flexibility. Yeah, Peter, I I agree with that, Randy. I say we go ahead and allocate it. I just want to keep keep track of how we're spending it. I don't want it to disappear out into the cloud and we we forget about it or forget what it is. Uh, I just want to be careful how we spend that money. But yes, I say allocate it, get that report in, and then we've got that closed out and we've got the money. Can I just ask a quick question? Yes, if, Sarah. If we allocate it put it in the general services, do we have to be careful? I know money is fungible. But do we have to be careful about what we use it for? Like we can't, so wasn't there something about paying back debt? We couldn't do there was like almost no restriction to that category given the money that we have. We can't use it to reduce debt, but, but you could use it. I mean, you could just say you used it towards the flood and yeah. be right. done with it. And right. you, you know, you certainly are spending more than what's left on the flood. And yeah, 
And so, I mean, that would be like one cent, one line, you know, we spend it on the flood and you'd be done with it. Mm -hmm. But the money would still be there in the fund balance. But mm -hmm. So does that, is that something, Dorinda, that you um, feel comfortable writing in, like th that you're able to do that, like on this report that's due? This mid well, if you want me to do it, I mean, I'm not going to do it unless you want me okay. to allocate all of it to something generalized like that, you know, general. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I would make the motion that we do that. Can we do that even though it's not worn? Yeah, I guess we can. It is it worn. It is, it is worn. worn. Yeah. And okay. it's just, you know, we'll just yeah. obligate it as yeah. being okay. Obligated. Any clarification? I need clarification. I'd like do that. I don't know what that means. Does that mean toward the flood or the allocate? No. We, we allocate. We allocate the remaining ARPA funds that haven't actually been spent. I mean, they may have been committed, but they haven't been spent. Um, to a general category, so we can close out the whole general operation don't do blood just in case no, they're okay. like no, oh being not going to give thing. it to you to allocate to general service yeah yeah, yeah general okay. services okay so peter made that motion is there a second all right there's a second from vic all any further discussion should i use the big dollar figure that we have that yes two well there's four? actually three four so there's actually 344907 that hadn't been reported yet, but but 50 of that we know went towards gravel, okay. but we still can take the whole amount. And, you know, yeah. But so what's the number I should use in this motion? Um, 344907. 344907. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Alrighty. And one other thing, before I sign this thing for the watershed, did you guys read all the? Wait, All the so details. Did you vote on that? No, we haven't finished. We have we have to finish this article. Oh, okay. I thought you did. And did anyone second that? Uh, there was a second from Vic. Okay. And then we were. Is there any further discussion? And you asked a question. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of passing uh, the spending of the remaining ARPA funds for general services, say aye. 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 Okay. Right. The ayes have it. It is passed. Great. Dorinda. Okay, back to this watershed yeah. contract or yeah. agreement or whatever. Yeah. Besides it saying still the 25% or whatever. Yeah. Um, there was all up there was other stuff in here that um about dates and things. Makes no sense. So, but you're all good with all that to just go ahead and well, I think he's gonna send us another copy in a week or so, right? Well, before they've, they've we asked. had to sign this. Oh, that's oh, okay, that's not. That's what I okay. What we talked about earlier in this meeting was signing this, and then and he then he would it. issue an amendment with the changes right. that we talked about. Tonight. But you all have to sign it or just me? Uh, no, it's got to be signed by the treasurer. It says. Okay, can we see it again? Yeah, yes, I, I do. But there was dates that it had to be completed by and things like that. So on like the last page, I had emailed it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know if I talk the completion dates. Didn't he also so say permit, that they can extend the completion dates, or did I make that up? Yeah, he said basically at any point in time before deployment, we can walk away, but estimated permits, it, it's a, obtaining permits is estimated by July 30th of 2024. Mm -hmm. Um. Complete quality assurance plan estimated July 30 of 2024. Solicit bids estimated September 30 of 2024. Award construction contracts estimated of October 15, 2024. Uh, date of completion of construction January 9th of 2025. And close out of activities estimated 120 days. So these are estimates. I mean, that seems reasonable that you could get a construction completed by January, the beginning of January 2025, if bids came through um, in appropriate time frame. You have any concerns with that? Okay. You want to look at this? Or look at this? Be back in the night. Yeah, right. and they're gonna they're gonna want to be done before things start to freeze. So yeah, four hundred and fifty nine thousand eight hundred. 
but this is where that's going to be amended the budget yes. right it is amended. but we still um yeah you'll still have to come up with four hundred fifty nine thousand dollars probably not all at once by the sounds of it but you know well if we have a net 30 right. with the contractor he's saying he can get us paid within two weeks yeah that'll that'll give us cover, yeah. the cash flow and we okay. theoretically we shouldn't have to come up yeah. with anything all right. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Okay. Um, all righty. We're still behind schedule. Just a tad. Um, I've lost my agenda. Is this it? Yeah, here it is. No, this is the DCA. Okay, never mind. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, orders. Yeah. Here they are. Okay. Correspondence, Sarah. Any correspondence? Uh -uh. I don't think I got any correspondence either. Did you get some correspondence? <clears throat> I don't know. I just, saw, I just saw his hand up. No, I don't think we did. We got some correspondence from our attorney, but that's not something to discuss in a public meeting. Okay. Peter, did you get any correspondence? No, no just just we want to we want to say about a little bit about what happened at our FEMA FEMA meeting, Sarah. Quickly. Everything has changed, Peter. Everything has changed as of today. <laughs> Everything what, changed again today. But in a good way. In a good way. Mo was just a we're we're gone with calling every culvert a damage inventory. We're just lump, we're just submitting the invoices as whole and seeing if if Washington buys them that way. Wow. That's real progress. We'll yep. see. Don't, we'll find don't out. Rules may change tomorrow. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so is there any other matters that come before the board? I just want to say one yeah. thing about March 5th. March 5th is going to be your first uh, select board meeting of the month, but it's also going to be town meeting. So do you want to post? We should have an organizational meeting on March 12th. Yep. And then um, there is, Cheryl seems to think that we need to sign orders on March 5th, but that may be not necessary. But it's the first and third usually, but we're making it the pressure. Phone. And by the way, this is Dorinda's last select. Board. No, it isn't. It because is she's going to keep coming as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> so if this is Dorinda's last day as treasurer. No, no, no. This is certainly not. No, yeah, last day. Last meeting as treasurer. Yeah. I would like to publicly acknowledge mm -hmm. you, Dorinda, for your amazing treasurer's service. For how many years? Tell us. I think it was seven, something like Seven that. years, and but you were on our select board for how long? Uh, it's all the town Nine reports. years, I think. Okay, nine years, nine, right? Nine years. You have given of your soul <laughs> and your heart, and you have been someone who has really guided us in very important ways, and you are extremely diligent and responsible. And it will be hard to replace you, Dorinda. Thank you. And I'm serious. Hard. And I just want to say thank you for your service because it's not easy. And you have been dealing with us through COVID, through floods. <laughs> the dark of night. The dark of night. Yes, Peter. I was just going to suggest that it would be really appropriate to say something at town meeting. Recognizing yeah. Dorinda. Oh, no, 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 no. Have you have you seen the um town report yet, Peter? Yeah. You probably haven't. There's a beautiful. Oh, I've seen it. I've read it. I've read it online. Yes, very nice. Tribute to Dorinda. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Want to say anything? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. your time. Thank you, Matt. For your service. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. Oh, don't say anything. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'm gonna start. She's gonna start crying. No. Thank you. No, Thank let's you. give to Rinda. I don't know. I don't know how many years it's been you and I have been working together, but it's been a lot of years. Hey, Dorinda. I think it goes back to the eighties. Well, I've heard that Dorinda is going to keep helping a little bit with like FEMA stuff. She's, she's, still a, she's still a JP. Don't forget. Oh, and BCA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Um, and, and who knows, maybe someone will write you in for treasurer and you may be back, Dorinda. I've already rallied the troops. <laughs> um, all righty. So is there any other matters that come before this fine board? Yes. We, uh, Eric and I have a meeting with uh, 
Jaron Borg, mm -hmm. the uh, stream operation guy. Okay. About um, a complaint of uh, washed out headwall on Norton Road. And we went up and looked at it last week. And the truth. now we have to meet up. The only culvert that was put in on Norton mm -hmm. Road, it's almost to the end where we turn around. It was a four foot culvert that goes into the North Branch. And it just washed out a little bit on the side. But we're going to see if we can. We have blocks and we we'll want to see if we can just build a headwall. So we're going to bring that up. And then we're going to push for the permit uh, to clean out around the bridge on um, Akala Hill Road and Brook Road. Great. Just mention that before we're going to be okay. doing the next. Uh, Couple of weeks, um, and then I'll, I'll I'll be going to that uh, planning commission uh, meeting tomorrow night. Oh, thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. and um, Eric and I have a webinar tomorrow on uh, how to build a new town garage. Really? There you go. Yeah. Out of hay bales. Huh? <laughs> Out of hay bales. Yeah. Straw. Straw bales. <laughs> Okay, any other matters that come before the board? All righty, it is 651. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for Thank coming. Thank you.